Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Daddy, we really want to thank you and mommy for the great opportunity you have given to us to be here as a family. Um, we thank you very much, sir. We are too small to, to stand here. But for that grace and the opportunity, thank you once again, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy. You are blessed. And I want to thank our pastor too, Pastor and Mommy. I wait the Lord will bless you. All the ministers for allowing us to come. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. And for the precious people of God, thank you very much. God will speak to us today. And our homes will not be the same. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So I will call my sister, Adebola. And I will call our son here. He will be Israel today. And I will be daddy. And I will be representing mommy. Praise the Lord. And any question you have today and I'm not able to answer, I am not afraid. Because daddy and mommy are seated there. And the Holy Spirit is the master. He's going to help all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Hadebola, sit down. Israel, please have your seat. We are going for a family meeting. And we pray that you are all going to be blessed today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hadebola, I discovered that you have been moody these days. Can you tell me what is really wrong? All right, ma. I noticed that my parents are doing things they don't want me to do. For example, my father humanizes and my mother goes for parties and they come back late at night. And on Saturday, I tell them, Mom, I'm hanging out with a friend. And they say, you cannot go anywhere. Stay in the house. Read your books. Do this. Do that. And sometimes, as teenagers, we are always very angry. Like, we see you do these things. We see you take these steps. But you don't want us to tread in that path. So what is the problem? Praise the Lord. I will not call Israel now. Because I know he's loaded with his own questions. But I will first take the first part. When we are talking of gap, or we are talking of bridge, then there must have been a gap. And this gap we are talking about comes about, or we can say the gap, it's obvious that it is something that has that has made maybe let me let me say two generations coming together you will all agree with me that we were born in a particular generation a generation whereby our parents don't talk much what our children our parents do in those days is that they communicate mostly with their every part of their body but in this new generation, our children have decided to sorrow us, okay? That is to speak loud. You won't mind me. I will have to speak their language or else they won't listen to me today. And those are the things we are going to be saying. Because these are two different generations. The way we were brought up is quite different from the way these children were brought up. And I'll take you to this. You will know that in the olden days, when a child is newly born into a family, the father or the, 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 the children in that, in that community, they will be coming to look at the new baby. And you will discover that for days, that new baby will not open his eyes. And everybody will be saying, ah, Koti Laju. Ah, she's yet to open the eyes. Oh, the boy has not opened his eyes. And if eventually, maybe by the sixth or the seventh day, the child is now opening his eyes, small, small, and you'll be shouting, Wawo, Wawo, Oti Laju, hey, Oti Rimi, Wo, Wawo, me. And the millennial children, 
which we have now, when they are coming, they will bring, they will come with their eyes wild open. <laughs> Once a damn alone, one year so. Their eyes are wide open. So the generations differs. The world in which we grew up differs. So we must appreciate this fact that we come from different worlds. Now, when we talk of our own world, well, we believe it is the best. And we believe there is no age like it. Because when they tell us that you must not sit by the door, because if you sit by the door and you hit, you will not be full. We all believe it without questioning. Abibeko. But when you tell a child these days that if you sit by the door and you eat, you will not be full, what will they say? Say, mommy, go and sit down. How, how, how does my sitting at the door, what does it have to do with my stomach? That is to tell you that their generation is not totally bad. But I won't say our own generation too is too gullible. When they tell us that if you stand in the rain, your hand will be withered. I hope you remember all those things. And once they say it, you dare not try it. Because we believe that the name of the Lord Jesus. So the first thing that we must take and know as a child of God is that these children that the Lord has put in our care is not our own. These children that the Lord has put in our care, they are not our own. If you look at Psalm 127 verse 1, it told us that children or to Psalm 27, 127 verse 1 says, children are the heritage of the Lord. So the Lord holds them. The Lord holds them. So he now gave us the grace to take care of these children for him. And I pray as parents, as we are doing that work which the Lord has given to us, God will give us the grace he will give us the knowledge. He will give us the understanding to lead the children aright in Jesus' name. In that uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 4, it talks about parents and children. It talks about parents and children. She has told us a lot of causes of this um, gap between children and parents. And uh, significantly, we can see that the children are right. And we are going to be looking at it one after the other. Some of the things that could cause this gap, like I told us, we should have it at the back of our mind that the children is not our own. So when we know that they are not our own, that we are just the caretaker, we'll commit them first to the hand of the owner. 
a ma fi won fun eni to ni won so most importantly your first job as a parent is to pray for those children i want you to know that there is nothing you can force on them it won't work there is nothing you can force see by the grace of god i am a teacher and in the classroom you have different uh, behavioral pattern and you will discover that these children most importantly they differ from one person to the other at times when you will speak to a child in a way he or she doesn't like he will not repeat that thing but there are some no matter what you say except you beat them they are not ready to listen but some you don't even need those two what you need is to beg them what you need to do is to beg them is to let them know that they are important is to let them know that they are knowledgeable is to appreciate and honor whatever they tell you and when they believe in you or they trust you don't betray their trust don't betray their trust so as we take it one after the other i pray that the lord will help us in the mighty name of the lord jesus one of the solution to bridge the gap is communication after we have handed these children to god you know there are a lot of things that is contending and contesting uh, with these children, especially the millennial children. You know a lot of things we were not open to when we were growing. So, some of our elderly mamas, even in their own time, there was nothing like television. But in my own generation, there is television. The only thing that is that it is not common. It is only the rich people that have television in their house. So the command of my father is, you must not leave this house to go and watch television elsewhere. But you know as a child, you want to go and watch television, especially when there is a drama going on. You will see her standing at the window. You want to peep and see what is going on inside. But if you look at this generation, even if you prevent them from watching television, they have it all over their phones. They have it all over. So what is it? If you say, okay, I want you to read from so, 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 and so, they can tell you, mommy, okay, I'll read. I have my notes on my phone. They will tell you they have their notes on their phone. And if you said you want to see, they will just press PDF and it will bring out the notes, just like the topic, and you see the notes. And I want to tell you that after you leave, they may decide to turn to another thing. So you can't outsmart them. So constantly, you know, communicate with them. And um, if you look at that Proverbs chapter, 25 verse 11 Proverbs 25 verse 11 I will read the Yoruba It says be a soigiwura ninu agbon fadaka be ni oro ti aso ni akoko re So most of the time these children want you to communicate with them instead of you to read courses and decree and issue laws. One Igbo. I want to fear. Konitumo. A friend was telling me, he said when he too was growing and he was in the university, and the father would come and be saying, This is what I want you to do. The mother would say, This is what he said he would just be looking at them and said, Emma Wawele, Kinomo. <laughs> because as at that time, the father was a grade two teacher. And the mother. And she's in the university studying sociology. 
And you know in sociology, they will tell them there is no God. And when the mother is now saying, ah, there is God, there is this, there is that, just look down on the mother and say, well, kill on so, kill on well, eh, they don't know anything. So constantly, let us communicate with them. And what are the things we are to communicate with them? Number one, show them the love of God. Show them the love of God. Let them know that there is a God. Tell it to them. Right from the time they were young. By the time they are older, if you begin to tell them that story, it will have an impact. You know when they are small, their hearts, we call it tabula rasa. There is nothing there. It comes like a slate. It is whatever you write there. Whatever you write is what will stick to their hearts. You may say, ah, ah, I teach him of the Lord. I pray for her. But still he ends up joining this. Yes, you have sown the seed. And that seed you have sown will germinate definitely one day. It is not the same day you put a seed on the ground that it will germinate. So what are you going to do to water that seed? It is prayers. Prayers and constant chatting. I go to, I have boys, I go to their room. When they come back from school, you know, when they dress well, I tell them, son, you are really looking good. They say, mommy. I say, I have by your girlfriend. Say, mommy, 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 girlfriend, girl. Ah, I am a child of God, don't know, girl. I said, don't deceive me. You know, and little by little, one my jabbo, one my jabbo. And when you are close to them, easily you will see they are full. They are flaws. I told one, I said, do you know you look very handsome? <laughs> he smiled, he said, mommy. I said, those girls in the university won't allow you rest to. He said, ah, ah, mommy, mommy. He said, today, ah, they know that I am going somewhere. I said, those, ah, those girls will be bothering you. I said, mommy, I said, you have so many girls that are your friends. He said, Mommy, what do you expect? I went to a boys only school. Mommy, all my friends were boys now. Now that I'm in the university, uh -uh, I should have girls now. I said, yes, you are right. But do you know there must be a limitation to it? He said, Mommy, I am not a small boy. I said, I know. You know to them, they believe they are old enough. They have the knowledge. They have the understanding. They have read a lot of things you don't know. So when we talk to them, they look down on us and say, Kine, Kine, mommy, and so. But you can get to their heart through right communication. You talk to them, and they're not when they are hungry. When, not when they want to go to party and you did not allow them. Not when they bring in their boyfriend and you frown your face. There is nothing you tell them at that time that they will understand. But be their friend. Communicate with them. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I want us to also know that there are, our thought flow differs. Our thought flow with these children differs. Like I told you, and I gave you examples the other time, you know how our home morals. And the example I will give is that of Samson. When Samson saw Delilah, the children of Israel would never marry from a Philistine. They have been told, they have been warned, like our parents have told us when we are young. And we take it just like that. Though not in my own generation, no. But by the time we are growing, and daddy said, hey, I want you to marry, ah, daddy, I've never met your son's friend, your, the, I've never met him, I don't know him, he may not even like me. You know, you give them reasons. But in the olden days, when they say this is the person you are going to marry, that is the person. 
nothing changes. And you will all discover, you will, you will agree with me that many of these people, our parents are not happy. Because they did not marry man and woman of their choice. Many of them were forced into that marriage and they cannot leave. And they live their life like that till the very end. But God said is a leader of them that diligently seek him. Even in that, God still blesses our parents. And our own generation, no, we will tell our parents reasons. But these days, even when they are in America, or they are not even where you are, it is when you know the person that you will say, ah, eh, she's too tall. Ah, this one is too skinny. You know some parents will say, ah, are you sure that girl is going to have a new trust? She's too skinny. You know, we bother on things that does not concern us so much. But the truth is, you know, they are taught pattern. Something in that Bible passage um, said, Judges 14, 3. He said, give her to me. I want her. The parents said, no. Ah, it is not in our custom. We don't marry from the Philistines. He said, it pleases my heart. Give her to me. So they are taught, our, their thought flow with us differs. It differs greatly. Then in a home where there is no attention, when we, where we don't give attention to those children, there will be gap. There will be gap. You know, the father works in America, the mother works in Abuja, and the children have to live alone. That is even if they are comfortable. I know of a family. We have the girl in my school where I work. The father have gone for years. For about 10 years, they don't see their dad. And the mom said because there is no money, he had to leave these children and work in Lagos. And he rented a room for the girl and his two brothers. And they were living alone. Nobody to check their excesses. What do you think will happen? Definitely, there will be gap. There will be gap. These children will not flow together. By the time their parents come together or they come around, definitely they will be closer to their siblings than their parents. I can give you a personal example. When I got married, you know, I, I come from a little home from the Alako ways, and my husband is you know, the two parents are illiterate. And he said he lives alone all his life. He, was, he has been living alone since the age of three. Because the place where there is school, there is no school in the village. So they had to brought him to town, to school. So he lives alone in the house they built with the tenants. So, you know, when I travel and come back, I expect him to say once a while, I miss you. He will never say that. So one day I confronted him. I said, ah, and you miss a yoni. That is, you don't miss me at any time. He said, ah, let me be no. Let me go, she miss a yon. You know, it was like a stab. Say, ah, hey, shaking it. When I don't know how they miss people. What's in that bit of a And, you know, in fairness, in fairness to him, he didn't mean any harm. But I was offended. It really pained me. Because where I grew from, where I came from, anytime daddy traveled like that, and mommy comes back, or that it is daddy's turn to travel, you know, mommy says, ah, my dear, muti mi sinye e kabo, ba wo wani, ba wo long. So when I go anywhere, nobody asks me, I just come back, just like that. No, ni, ah, I said, you have to, you have to know how to do this thing. So I was teaching him. I want to question. Share Miss Mini. Wani Benny. Mu Missy. So, um, you know, gradually now, the last time I traveled, one fair, but one, hello, say, man, she that Danny Lewa. Wani that Danny, I can miss you, you know, So let us know that, just like I said the last time I came here, we are two different people. 
not trained the same way, coming together to leave us, husband and wife, raising our children. You know, there are two different words coming together. So in raising the children, definitely we have to harmonize. The father and the mother must agree to train our children. So when we don't have uh, attention, we don't give them any attention, there is no support, definitely that kind of a child, you know, will not be, the emotion of that kind of a child will not be balanced. And if you look at what happened in 1 Samuel chapter 16, it is the story of when uh, Elisha went to the house of the father of David. And he was asking for the children. You know they've completely forgotten about David. They have completely forgotten because he lives in the bush with the, with the sheep. So after they have tried all the children of um, is it Jesse? After they have tried all his children, and he's, the man of God did not see the one that God said he should anoint. He said, is the, is, are these all your children? He said, ah, it remains one. He's the baby, oh. the one that cannot amount to anything. They believe is the baby. He's nobody. He lives in the bush with the animal. And he said, nobody will sit down. Someone said no one will sit down until they bring him. And they had to go. And by the time they brought him, God said, anoint him. Praise the Lord. So let's give our children attention. When there is no attention, when there is no love, when we don't tell them how much we care, they take us for granted. Don't forget I am still talking on this issue of uh, communication then you will discover that, just like my daughter said, is they said we don't give them their space. We don't give them their space. That is, they want to be alone. They want to take some decisions without the interference of daddy and mommy. We don't give them that space. I want to encourage parents that we should allow them once a while. Let's listen to them. Let's listen. And by the time we are listening to them, you will discover that not everything that these children are saying is rubbish. We may discover that, oh, um, they are small. But when you make them involved, huh, you will know that God has endowed them with knowledge. Ye yesterday, one, one, one was, he wanted to travel to Ijebu. And you all know that there are kidnappers on Ijebu Road. So he told me the day before yesterday that, Mommy, don't forget the Ijebu. I said, I'm going. I said, Ah. Ijebu, Mommy, I'm going to be. He said, But you have covered me with the blood of Jesus. Me, I will not be kidnapped. I said, Amen. My mind is still shaking. When we went for that program, as we were waiting for Daddy Gio, I was texting. I said, when you are leaving home, from home, take a bus, going to New Garage. <laughs> you know, I was telling him how he's going to do it. Then he replied, he said, Mommy, no problem. Your son is big. I did not stop her. I sent another one. Make sure you leave the party on time. He did not respond again. When it was 4 o'clock, when we got home, and I've not seen it, I sent another message. Make sure you leave the place early. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He did not answer. So when it was 5 o'clock, he knew I would be worried. He now he called and said, Mommy, I'm already on my way. I said, thank you. And when he came home at last, he said, ah, ah, your wala is too much. Live on time. Do this. Do that. Ah, ah. When I'm in a war or when I'm in school, do you go about with me? 
So let's commit them to the hand of the Lord. Let's give them their space. I'm not saying that we should not interfere at all. But the most important thing is that uh, let, let, let's get them involved. And let's be involved too. And how can we be involved? Like I told us, prayers. You commit them to the, to the hand of the person that holds them. By worries, we cannot hide anything and we cannot remove anything. So let us constantly pray that the plan and purpose of God will stand sure in their lives. And one of the other things that is causing this gap is the cultural shifts. You know, during our own time, this is the way we do it. This is where you must sit. This is where you must get to. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. Our culture does not permit it. Just like it happened in that Genesis chapter 29, verse 25 and 26, when Jacob wants to get married. And he wanted to marry a heart drop. Who is who? Rachel. But because the culture of the land said that the younger cannot get married before the elder, so they had to give Leah, they had to deceive Jacob and give, her, give him the first. So we can see that the culture differs. So the culture of this generation, like I told us, is quite different from our own. So the only way we can help and the only way we can um, flow with them is to communicate. And we are to listen and understand. Listen and understand their opinions. So that by the time they give you reason why they are doing some things, you will know that they are not completely useless. Like most of our daddies and our mommies will say. We have it in Colossians chapter 3, verse 21, that um, we should not provoke our children, lest they be discouraged. Another thing I want our parents to give to these, our teenagers and youth is open-mindedness. When parents open their hearts, they look at things in a new perspective. This helps them to understand why what is being said is actually said the way it is said. This is very important if they must understand their children and their priorities. See, when we are open-minded, you will learn new things. Do you know that the phone, because I know one of the problems we have with the youth and the teenager is the use of this phone. They can be with their phone from the night. But the truth is, even in this little time, if we open our mind, they teach us new things. When we treated this topic in the church about four or three Sundays ago, one of the teachers said, our daughter, brought an assignment home. It's a mathematics. And they said, 2Y plus. And she said she's not very good in math. So she looked at it. She tried if she could help the child. She didn't get it. And she said, mommy, go go it now. Then she looked at her, a 10-year-old girl. She said, ah, mommy, go go it. And she said, how would I go go 2Y plus? You know how to write it. Say, say, mommy, mommy, you don't have to type. Just say it to Google and it will give you the answer. The mother said, and she did it. And it, she was amazed. So they can teach us a lot of things. They can. To get to their hearts, you have to be open minded. You know I sing their song at times. There is a particular one we went to come together and he was playing all this, their music and he's disturbing other pastors. 
And you know what I did? Because I know if I should say, stop that music, it may go and not come back. So I now said, darling, I love this, your music. I said, excuse me, dance. Let's dance together. And I picked his hand. He's a 20-year-old boy. And he was just saying, mommy, if you Jari, ah, what? I said, ah, teach me this, your dancing step now. I want to know. I be, is it like this? He said, mommy, if you fall, eh, it is daddy that will pick your pieces. I said, thank God he's even here. He will pick my pieces. <laughs> and you two will not allow me. You will just hold me. I said, wait, oh, Shabi, this is the way you twist. And they will laugh and laugh. They say, ah, ah, mommy. So if you think everything about their song, everything about what they do is wrong, you won't be able to get to their hearts. Be their friend. Be open. Then another thing, which will be the fourth thing I'll talk about, is learn to accept. Let us learn to accept them the way they are. I'm sure it is not easy. When a pastor's son decides to come home with an hairdo that you have preached that is not good. One of the pastors I took over for in one of our churches, Glorious Parish, some years back, the man said when the daughter was going to the university, he called the two of them and said, Daddy and Mommy, I am going to school now. They said they were very happy. They said, yes. He said, Mommy, when I get to school, I will perm my hair. They said they opened their mouth. They cannot close it. He said, Mommy, when I get to school, I begin to put on my hair rings. Daddy, when I get to... <laughs> they said, and he was now telling them, horn and horn. The father said he was at rage. <sighs> you mean what? You do what? All our lives, we have told you that this is, a, a, is not of a, 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 this is not godly. You must not dress this way. You cannot do this way. He said, now daddy, yes, I have obeyed. All these years you have taught me, but now I am going to the university. And all that you said I should not do, I will do said, the mother said they could not talk. And he went. He said the following day, he told them, um, I want to buy things for my school. Then the daddy said, don't worry, I'll take you to the salon. I thought you said you want to perm your hair. She said, yes. So daddy took her to the salon and waited outside until they finished. And she did all she said she's going to do, and they took her to school. But the father and the mother were crying and praying every night. God, we refuse to lose her to the world. Father, we refuse to lose her to the world. And she was there in school. You know, she did all those, but she was still able to comport herself. And before she got married, because we attended her wedding two years ago, she has removed all those things. Why? If they had said no, in this house, <laughs> heaven will fall. You cannot do this. He will look at you and say, Mommy, well, if you say not in this house, then I do it outside. Then they will go to school and they will not come home. So please, let's be open-minded. Let's accept them. Not that we should leave them totally into the world, but most importantly, let's go on our knees. God will help us in Jesus' name. And I want to talk quickly too on breaking through. Let us know that these children are not perfect, like we are not perfect too. Tell me, who doesn't have a past? Kosi. We all have our past, we learn by mistakes. See, during our time, when you want to put your hand into fire, when you have a new baby, and he wants to put his hand into fire, and you are taking that child, you are warning that child. 
he will refuse. Allow him to put his hand a little. What will he do? <laughs> when you bring fire next time, what will he do? He will run. He will say, Jojo, Jojo. Let them learn. There is no amount of... You see, our parents in the olden days, they will say, this is transport fair. You have an exam. Go to where you are going. And for the first time, you know, you will have to be asking and you will get to where you are going. But these days, we carry them all around. They don't know anybody. I have one 24 at home, 24 year old boy. And when he's going to anywhere, he will first ask me, Mommy, how would I take uh, transport from home to this place? We don't allow them to do anything. Let them learn. Let them. Let they, we have our past and we learn from it. Let them make their mistakes. Let them learn from it. It will be better off. What, what you do? They said, oh, 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 more. Can you call Tani teacher? When you don't pass through a particular thing and they are telling you, they are warning you, you don't believe it. She want to buy joy. Wow. Work by that. But in all, even in allowing them, in allowing them to break through imperfection, communication, prayers, acceptance, let it not uh, be. Let us not be weary in doing all those things. Talk to them, pray for them. As you know that what you don't have, you cannot give. When you don't have Jesus, you can't preach it to anybody. So it is what you have that you give to your children. If you have Jesus, give them Jesus. If you know the love of God, show them that love. So I will rest my house now and I will allow um, Israel to tell me his own grievances so that I will know where to continue in our family meeting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, first of all, my, my own style will be a little bit different. I want to bless God for the opportunity that he has given unto us today. Our God is the eternal parent. And scattered across the entire canon of scripture, we see how God has demonstrated his relentless love for his children, the Israelites. And even more so, we that are children of God nowadays. God loves us so much. So I want to thank God for that love, for you know how he expresses it, how he shows it to us. That is why we were sinners. Christ died for us. I also want to thank our parents, starting from you, mommy. God thank bless you, you, ma. I want to thank our daddy and mommy at the PICP, uh, daddy and mommy away. I also want to thank the parents at the, you know, the choir stand, the ministers, and all the workers. Truly, See, I, I will be speaking because we youths are closer to parents now. So I'm going to be speaking probably maybe I'm going to be standing in between parents and children. Uh, parenting these days, you see, with the advent of knowledge and the multiplicity of knowledge, parenting these days is much more an uphill task than it used to be. Children are more impressionable these days. They are less respectful. When you, when you do certain things, they ask you questions that can throw you off balance. So it's important to know that um, as a parent nowadays, you have to be firmly rooted. And another thing I want to point out is that being a parent is a lifetime job. Uh, you wonder that, okay, young man, why are you talking this way? Are you a parent? Well, I've studied certain things and I've been opportune to observe, thank you, mommy, God bless you, to observe my own parents. My older brother, who is, who is just two years older than me, is a, is a parent now, has two kids. So I have the opportunity to study him, study my own parents. You know, and then hoping that by God's grace, I will be a better parent when uh, I become one. And I also pray for everyone as an aspiring parent. Uh, God will give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding we need in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, in the book of beginnings, which is Genesis, we see how God related with his children, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden. That even when they disobeyed him, in Genesis chapter 3, we see this thing I'm talking about. Even when they disobeyed him, he called them and told them that, Adam, what did you do? 
who told you you are naked? He asked them questions. Even though he knew what they, what they had already done, he gave them fair hearing. That sometimes when maybe when our parents are interrogating us these days, it's like a police interrogating a TIFO. You know, there's nothing like they already, they have what they want to tell you at the back of their mind. So they don't carry your feeling along. You know, they just tell you what they want to tell you and that's it. But children nowadays have feelings. Children nowadays want to, they, they, they want to see you do what you're actually telling them to do. That is when it makes more sense to them. You see, actually, mommy has talked about a lot of things and I don't want to keep replicating. So I just want to ask, you know, a few questions. When it comes to marriage, you see, we the youth have some issues in that regard. Oh, recently, um, one of my grandmothers, one of the two of them was sick and she came to the house and we were taking care of her and all that. And then one of my uncles came to see her. So when I came, I was doing something behind. So when I, when I came to greet the uncle, I prostrated and greeted him like a normal Yoruba young man would do. The first thing he asked me is that, Yahweh uncle, where's your wife? You know, so there's, there's a lot of pressure on the youth nowadays to go and get married. Many times you see parents say, hey, what are you doing with your life? Hey, don't you know that people that are younger than you are already married? This, that, blah, 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 blah. So, and the thing is, this marriage thing is something that we have realized that if you make a mistake, nobody's going to be there for you at the end of the day. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. You see, there are so many things I want to say, but mommy has addressed a lot of things and I'm being conscious of time. So that marriage is an issue. How can we respond to the incessant pressure when it comes to marriage and all that? And also, again, on communication. Like I said earlier, most parents don't, uh, especially African parents, they don't carry feelings, you know, they don't, uh, the, feelings are not, the feelings of the children are not, I don't want to say they're not important to them, but they don't know how to relate with them based on that level. All they just want to tell you is that you are right, you are wrong. Oh, I've given you the rules, I'm the, the, the father, you see, even the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 now, it tells us that how it is that fathers should do what, they should be very careful that they should not push their children to wrath. We should follow the examples of our heavenly father who, even though we fall into sin, we have an advocate with the father who is the Lord Jesus Christ that pleads our case day and night. Praise God. So I believe that, you know, our parents should take leave from that also. They should take important lessons from that. There are some fathers that when they come to the house, all the children are doing is to scamper to safety and go and hide their heads in their rooms. There's no how the children will come out and tell you what they are doing. You see, I like mommy's approach so much because... You know, she was telling one of our sons that, ah, you, you know, you are a handsome boy, one of you, uh, you, you have a lot of uh, friends, girlfriends. There are some parents here that they don't even want to hear that their children has, that their male children has a girlfriend. They don't even want to, eh, what are you doing with it? At your age, or at my age, rather, do we know what, at your age, do, you, do I know what is called a girlfriend or a guy friend or whatever it is, you know? So, I'm your boyfriend, I'm your female friend. What you should do is focus on your studies. Praise God. You know, for the sake of time, we want to, you know, go into so much things. I also just want to talk about culture shifts. You know, culture shift. We see how, you know, uh, um, Laban was like, okay, Jacob, after serving me for so and so years, you want Rachel, but I cannot give you Rachel first because according to the tradition of the people, of my people rather, you have to marry the elder before the younger ones. Now, when my mom, uh, about 20 years ago, when, you know, my mom was still much younger. It's the tradition of the family then that when the family is doing something, all the wives of the family will come and they'll be carrying baths of pepe, they'll be grinding pepe and doing all of those things. They'll be, you know, peppering their hand and all that. All of the young ladies that were asking out and getting married to this day, they cannot help you do those ones who, you know, those ladies that are slave queens that, you know, all they do is take pictures and post it on Instagram and do TikTok and dance and do all of those things, you know. So things are different now. I pray for, you know, the younger guys nowadays that will begin to, you know, I, I, that God will give us the grace to handle the young women of nowadays. See, another thing is that, you see, I'm talking like a parent, like a child and all that because I just want to balance things. Another thing to quickly note that is very important is that the respect our mothers have for our fathers, the young ladies of nowadays, they don't have such respect for us, the younger guys, at all and at all. Before you have said two, they have said 40. You know, well, I, for the sake of our time, uh, look at um, when 
the, um, in the book of First Kings, chapter 12, 3 to 10, we see how Rehoboam, you know, the one that reigned after Solomon, he had an issue. And then he told the elders that, ah, okay, ah, I have this issue. The people who have come around and said, he's the burden on us. What should I do? The elders gave him an advice. Hey, do this, do that. And then, okay, I've heard. You know, but after, I'm sorry, after they left, because I'm doing this to them. You know, so, you know, after they left, he called the younger ones. And then, uh, hey, my guys, Dari, what did you say? And those ones, eh, Nikini, if their body is two, make it 40. Make it this, make it that. And then he listened to the younger ones. And then at the end of the day, his kingdom crashed and crumbled based on that. So I just still want to charge the youth now that um, Yoruba have is saying that a kid uh, cannot, even if a kid has as much clothes as the elders, you cannot have as much rags as they do. The rags represent the experiences. It represents the things they have done that they have failed at. So they know how not to do things. Praise God. So to tell the younger ones that as much as we believe that ah, we know more than our parents, we do this, we do that, we should still listen to them. Again and again, we see it in that um, book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. After, you know, God had given commandments. Oh, I am the Lord thy God. You shall have no other God before me. You shall do this, do that. After God had said certain things, about man's obligation to God, that is man's duty to God, how man should honor God. The next thing he said, that's the first five commandments, was about how man should honor God. But the last five, the first one that has to do with a man and a fellow man, is that honor thy father and thy mother, that that days may be long. So we see that in that book of Ephesians chapter 6, you know, between verse 1 and 4, we see that in Exodus also, we see that in Deuteronomy. And the Bible says, once has he spoken, twice have I heard. So if God says the same thing like two or three times, so parents are not people that you can joke with. Even though you're a child, you believe that oh, our generation, we know we have the in thing. Uh, you're about to say, Igbalani, and you go, Laye. Praise God. As you're a child now, one day you become a parent. And all of those, your ideas that you think they are, they are, they are the rave of the moment they are invoked, those ones will become obsolete too. And your children too will tell you to go and sit down in a polite way. So I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Praise Amen. Thank you very much, Israel. I, if we have anybody in the congregation that have one question or the other, you can please write and drop in the basket while I'm answering his question so that briefly we can do it together. I, I will quickly respond to pressure on youth on marriage. Praise the Lord. You know, in the olden days, our parents, didn't, many of them got married early. Our great grandparents married very, very early. Because by the time they died at 80, 70, you will see that their children will almost be 60, 65. Then you'll be wondering at what age, no affair. <laughs> but, you know, we see them as very old people. Why? Because they think many of them were not educated. And those that were educated, they didn't go far academically. You know, when we were growing, I remember one of my uncle that got married, and everybody was saying, ah, we 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 met Joe. That was more than three then. Then nobody was ah, okay, we met what? That was school sir. And he, ah, okay, we gone new. But these days, when you finish first degree, there will be no job. You will move on, you do the masters. Some of the youth have PhD. And they are still there, no job. And just like the adage my son says, you can't stay forever. The concern of the uh, old parents is to see their children's children because the Bible says their children's children is their gain is their crown, is the glory of their old age. So definitely they will give you that pressure. But my prayer is that God will make a way for the youth. The Yorubas will say, Igbara Lambura. Igbara Lambura. You can't wait for eternity. When I was married, I have a friend that was still searching. So anytime we meet, we'll be crying. I say, hey, Hore, I am almost 40 now. 
there is no I said don't worry God will do it and when God did it he was just having his children in succession and I that got married earlier than her I waited 10 years our own children even were older than mine so God has a plan and a purpose for everybody. Don't wait until you have the whole thing, you furnish the whole house, have a car, because the youth of these days will say, no, until I have it, my car, until I have this, until I have that, you don't know the plan and purpose of God. And just like he has said, I want to corroborate all he said concerning, I'm glad he's the one saying it, because if I had been the one that told you that, oh, listen to us, do it this way, because one day, you will become fathers and mothers. You will say they are saying the same thing. All of them are the same. Back on on, no, Sherry. That was she wanted to go and want to Back on on, no, Sherry. Kotele baso. Biye uba ying bele to batu bele lowe no. But all on lose mo boya o man shake badeni. But the truth no will not change. The truth will remains the truth. Nothing can change it. So God has put us in charge to lead and to guide you. What we see while sitting, you cannot see it even when you climb an upstairs. And that is what they call experience. We have tread the same path. Don't do this. Don't do that. It is because we know the danger in it. It, it is because we know the repercussion. A girl went for Valentine. February 14. And she did not come back until March 15. Yes. She went. She left the house that Sunday after service. She told the younger, the mother after the service that she's going home. She wants to go with the younger one. So the two of them left. When they got home, you know, the mother deliberately said the younger one should follow her. So when they got home, he now told the younger one that, ah, she wants to go and uh, uh, mend her shoes or something. I think they left out together. They said they are going for a party. And on the way, she said the younger sister should wait too. That she wants to go and take something at too. And she went another way. And when that one waited and waited and didn't see her, she had to go back home. She saw the key. She couldn't find her. And we, she came back to school on the 15th of March. And when she came, and I said, where have you been? He said, eh, mommy, eh, I was afraid. I knew mommy would not allow me to come back. I know she would do this, she would do that. And all the teachers wanted to crucify her. Mommy, ah, she's this. Mommy, she's that. This will not be her first time. She has been this. She has been that. I was just looking at them. And I said, okay, thank you very much. I said, just kneel down there. So she knelt. And when all the teachers left, and I said, sit down. She sat down. And I said, where have you been? She said, mommy, that day I went to club. I said, and what happened? after. He said, I got drunk. He said, and after that, what happened? He said, I feel, when I woke up, I find myself in my friend's house with his boyfriend. I said, but by the following morning, when you discover yourself, why don't you come back home? He said, mommy will kill me. I said, okay, how did you now manage to come back? He said somebody brought her after a month. I said, ah, did mommy kill you when you now got home? She said, no. I said, do you know what I'm going to do for you today? He said, no. I said, today I am going to expel you from this school. We don't want you in this school. And she was crying. She knelt down. And she was begging. I said, no. I said, no. Today we are going to expel you in this school. And she was promising me, ah, mommy, I promise. I will never. Mommy, I will never do that again. It's a promise. Write it down. This is my name. The truth is this. I was able to get the facts. We punished her. 
No, not like the way the teachers wanted her to be punished. I used sending her away to get to her heart. Then I told her, you know, she served the punishment for two days, and I said, make sure you see me the third day. You must come and greet me in this office every morning. I said, yes, ma'am. So when she came the third day, I said, sit down, my dear. I said, tell me about yourself. And she told me a lot of things, and I discovered that truly, the parents are trying their best, but the mother is too harsh. You know, when you, are, when you, want, them, when you want to correct them, study them, know where they want you to come in. And I sent for the mother. And by the grace of God, the girl is doing fine. And I believe God. Because when I was in that school some 13 years ago, there was a girl. She was very, very brilliant. And whenever she goes out with others, we always go and look for her in the midst of boys. And when it was time for her to become the head girl, they said, no, she can't be the head girl. She's too promiscuous. She's an alert. She's this. She's that. And I said, they should please give her to me. And I became her friend. Daddy knew about her. And years after, Daddy used to ask, how about that, your daughter? Egu something is the son. I won't say the football. Egu started. So daddy will say, that's your daughter, Egu. I said, Daddy, I didn't know where she is now. And just about a month ago, I just went to the senior school. I wanted to see the principal. And the girl was, you know, I saw this young woman beaming, smiling, full of life. And I just greeted her and went in. And by the time I was coming back, you know, they had to help me do a little work. And as they were doing it, she smiled and said, Mommy, you don't remember me. I said, I know you are a Sasuga, but I don't know. She said, yes. She said, Mommy, I was the girl that was abandoned because the, everybody believed I'm a prostitute and you picked me up. I said, are you a goon? He said, yes. Then I jumped up and I hugged her. I said, this is you. He said, yes, mommy. She works with um, this uh, NGO. She's a nurse. She has been to America. She has traveled all over, really doing well. And she needed a certificate, the original certificates. She's processing something abroad. You know, she, she talked about a teacher that she will never forgive that teacher because she was the one, it was the one that said this and said that. But mommy, you, you believed in me and I've been looking for your number. She collected my number and she gave me 10,000. That 10,000 was a lot of money because that day I didn't have a thousand naira. God knows. So don't ever believe that our children cannot make it. Don't condemn them for whatever they do. Still pray for them. Still talk to them in love. Talk to let them know why they must not do some certain things. Don't lie to them or don't tell them like they told us that when you sit with a boy, you get pregnant. That was what they told us. Don't even talk to them because when you talk to them like this, you just get pregnant. And by the time you begin to talk to them and you are not getting pregnant. You rubbish whatever they have said. So talk to them. Tell them. Let them know. When you have an, a, a, a close relationship with a man and you begin to have your carnal knowledge of each other, it will get you into trouble. Let them know the kind of trouble they can get to. Show, tell them. I told one of uh, my son, I said, if you impregnate anybody now, you know you are not working. And mommy cannot just take care of you and your daughter, your child and the wife because I have done my own bit. So you will have to go and look for a job and work. And once, since you have not true from your university, it is labor work you will do. And when one is doing a labor job, ah, you will do nights, you will do afternoon. I will say, ah, mommy, me, I want to finish school. Uh -huh. So if you want to finish school, there is time for everything. God will help us in Jesus' name. So let's quickly look at the questions we have. They have helped me sort them, as I think. We have one here. Why is it that our parents expect their children to have a fiancé or boyfriend before 
the graduates. Okay, let me see anyone that looks like it. Let me quickly answer that. That is not... Um, most parents believe that it's better you have your fiancé while leaving school because that is the place you meet the largest crowd. When you leave the university, you will discover that when you go for youth service, it is only at the camp you see a lot of people again. And it can be as large as what you have in your school. So you see a lot of people from different homes. You'll be able to study. In your department, you see a lot of them. But it's not by force. I have seen someone that it is in the youth service that he met the person he married. I have seen those that it is where when they have started a uh, job. But the most important thing is ask for God's leading. Ask for God's leading. If God is leading you to anybody. Somebody told me, said, while he was doing youth service, you know, he was a, he's a Christian. And they were preparing for the next set of Christian coppers that are coming. He said, and as the young lady is coming, the Lord told him, that is your wife. And she, he has never had any girlfriend. You know, he said, ah, God. Why at this time? No, I don't want to be kind. We are coming to groom those that will walk after us, not to come and look for a girlfriend. And lo and behold, that is the wife today. And God may be leading you in the church. So the most important thing is ask for God's leading. And we parents, be praying for them from now. I pray for my children from right the, of the time they are in the womb. A lady taught me. You know, we were admitted together, and she used to lay her hand on her tummy to pray. And I asked her one day, I said, Kiwa Lomanso. And she told me, I pray for them. I tell God, that my day of delivery will be saved. Children, you will not be the only one. Uh, my son, my daughter, you will prosper. You will be great. You will meet the right woman. You know, she's prophesying to her future. So let's, even when they are not at home, Let's take their pictures, pray, prophesy good things into their life, and the Lord will lead them in Jesus' name. We have another one here. How do we correct mothers that talk in oh that talks insult their husband in the presence of their children? That is one. How do we correct mothers? Mm. That is why we said what we don't have, we can't give. The morals we are talking about, when we are moral, morally corrupt, there is nothing we can give. So most importantly, that mother, you have to pray for her. That's the first thing. Pray very hard for that mother. Because it can disgrace daddy anywhere. A colleague of mine went abroad, and the wife is that, this kind of woman. Because they had fracas one day, and the wife called me. I worked with the husband, and the wife called me because I used to call the f husband my father. My first name is Ifeulua, so we called the man Babafe. So, you know, I called the wife. I don't know her, but I used to call her mommy. So whenever I phoned the husband, I said, Mami, keep mommy. So I now said, she now called me. Uh, I want to see you, ma. I want to report your daddy to you. And I went. It was early last year, during our yearly fasting program. And you know, the, if you see the way this woman was cursing the man, and I was saying, please calm down, ma. She be in Leron, she said, you sent for me. Please calm down. You want me to say something? That is why you invited me. No. She was just raging and talking and talking and talking. Well, I prayed with them and I left because she didn't allow me to say anything. So they went abroad in December. 
And I saw the husband last week, and I asked him, I said, I hope um, she comported herself when you traveled. He said, ah, well, she will reformulate her. That is, she went mad once. And the man they, uh, the man they lived with abroad, the son wanted to call police. He never saw something like that. You know, a woman abusing the husband, talking and shouting. I want to know something has gone wrong. And he was about calling the police when the father came in and said, what? He said, I'm about calling the police. Mommy has been shouting and yelling and shouting, and I think he has gone mad. He said, ah. That is that person has gone mad. So be praying for mommies. And I will want to tell us our mommies, please, in the name of God. We are training these children. Whatever we do is what they will copy. Don't let us be do as I say and not do as I do. Let us lead by example. Let us lead. And you know God can help us. No matter how difficult, we may have been used to it, but we can ask God, help me. Help me. I want to be calm. Help me. And we can. I know there is a lot of stress. I know there is a lot of pressure on us, but God will help us in Jesus' name. And there's another one here. It says, in what home affair or parent affair should the children or as youth now be involved in? Our parents often carry body in which they refuse to share with their adult children. Kindly help show insight. I didn't really get it. I don't really know. But praise the Lord. That is what we have been saying. Don't let us uh, carry our burdens alone. These children, they understand. There is nothing we are going through that they may not know. See, when at a time they, told, they called me for a meeting and they told me how much they want to be taken to school, they believe that what I'm giving them is too small. So I saw their reactions. They believe that mommy is cruel, she's this, she's that. And I called a family meeting because I saw my parents do it when I was young. So I told them. I first brought out my phone and I showed them my salary. I said, this is what comes in for me every month. They said, good. I said, take your pen. Number one, you collect this amount. Number two, I give you this amount. Number three, and I have two adopted sons. So till number five. I said, now, bank loan, repayment. Number one, oh yeah, this amount. Cooperative, this amount. And by the time I said the sixth one, they dropped their pen. I said, continue. They said, mommy, money has finished. I said, okay. I said, that is how much I earn. Any other thing that comes in is not regular, but this one is regular. Another thing I do is, you know, I, I conduct engagements, but that is once in a while. And when I do it, I do it in Christian form. I don't force people. I don't have to make juju to make people to give money. It is whatever they give that I take. And I do it as a ministerial work. I don't do it to buy bands and to buy whatever. So I just do it. And the first one said, Mommy, reduce my own money by 5,000. I'll manage. And others kept quiet. If I did not call them to meeting, they will know what we are going through. I told them. I told them their life story. Some, sometimes I call them. I let them know how I gave back to each of them so that they will know how to behave. 
when one was uh, getting difficult, I told him, I said, whenever you get yourself in trouble, or when you move into the camp of the enemy, you will be caught. He said, mommy, who is the enemy? I said, it's the devil. He said, why? I said, because he didn't want me to have you. Because he knows the plan and purpose of God for your life. And once I have you, he knows that victory won. And he's never tired. So he said, okay, the next thing I can do is to derail you. So that when he derails you, that plan will not come to pass. So any day they have been doing something bad in your school and you join them, they will catch you. Because the devil will say, let me show him Pepe. He said, eh, eh, that is it. So I don't tell them, oh, you'll be destroyed. Ah, you, oh, say, no. I tell them the implication of what they do in love. And God will help us in Jesus' name. And they, another one, Daddy, please, have, you are going to round everything up for me, so, because I'm, all right. Um, my daughter still wants to talk, but please let me quickly read this. Okay. Yes, I want to see if there is still any I have not answered. Okay. Okay. Here. Question. Reference to allowing them make their own mistakes, ma. When do you hope it won't go a wire or wrong? At what point can we parents intervene? That's question one. Two, a pastor once said that the misbehavior of children of servants of God is a light application from the devil. What do you have to say to this? And I have the third question here says, what is the best way to correct children, especially the teenager and youth, bearing in mind that they are the, they are the crisis and out oh, they are at the crisis and inquisitive age. Well, I'll take it one after the other. They said, at what stage should we allow them to make their mistakes? Praise the Lord. Let's have it at the back of our mind that if we have, you know, if we decide that, no, we, want, we don't want them to make mistakes, and we are pampering and following them all around, I want to tell us that if they will still make that mistake, they will fall into the trap. I have told us, most importantly, we need to pray for them. Two, we need to communicate with them. Tell them, talk to them. If they decided, because if we gave back to them and we died that same day, do you know they are going to leave and they will still be what God wants them to be? It may take a longer time, but they will get there. The plan and the purpose of God for our children will stand sure, no matter what. So, mostly, let us pray. Let us be praying as a mother. That is what we hold them. Pray for them. Morning, afternoon, the Bible says we should pray without ceasing. Tell them, sing it to them, the purpose of God. Make it beautiful in their hairs. You know, we say it in a way that they will want to listen to us. And I pray today that every word that will be coming forth from our mouth will be seasoned with grace in the life of our children in Jesus' name. They said, a pastor once said that the misbehavior of their children or servants of God is a light affliction from the devil. Praise the Lord. 
It can be an affliction from the devil. And it can just be a process which they are going to pass through in life. Do you know that you can't pass without having an examination? Most of the things we we'll see manifesting in their life as manifested in our lives too before. When we were growing, whatever our parents tell us to do is fine I told people, I said my parents had eight of us. Until we grow, I've never seen a day where the two of them said they want to fast because of us. I've never seen, when my father wants to pray, we were born Baptists. You know the prayer of Baptists in those days is not like these days. So, Our Father and our God, we just thank you for these children. Be with them. Two minutes, we are, we are off. I've never seen them, you know, holding and praying, all the things we do these days. But one thing that I know that they did all their life is that they led us by example. My mother would never do anything contrary to whatever she said you should do. If she said she's not allowing us to go to party, you will not see her go to party too. Even when we were growing, she would not even raw powder. So let us pray. Let us lead them by example. Let us pray. Let us, this time, you know, they, especially the teenage years and these youthful years, the devil stays there. He knows that, ah, the purpose of God is about coming to pass in the life of these children. No, I will stay here. I will make them disobedient to their parents so that the plan and the purpose of God will not stand sure, so that they will not live, so that they will not make it, so that they will not succeed. But your prayers and my prayers will help them. Even if it is the affliction of the devil, the Bible says we shall agree as touching anything here on earth. He said they will give to us. Let's reason with the Lord. He said, come, let's reason together. God, you are the one that gave me this daughter. You are the one that gave me this son. This is what and what and what the devil is doing. God help me and God will help us in Jesus' name. And the last one says, what is the best way to correct children, especially the teenager and youths, bearing in mind that they are, this is the crisis period. Yes, I have answered that too. It's a crisis period in their life. And to a certain age, especially with the decadence we have in the world now, go to everywhere. You see how our youths taking drugs. That's the terrible menace that the devil has thrown into the world. You see how our girls in adultery. Do you know that this issue of drug, even girls are involved? You know, it is because the end of the time is at hand. And the devil is really at work. He wants to destroy the future of these children. But as a parent, we have to pray and give them what we have. And what is that? Salvation. The seed we sow into their life will germinate goodness in the name of Jesus. If we are the type that fights every day, definitely when they grow up, they will grow to become a nagging and a fighting wife or a nagging or a fighting husband. God will help us in Jesus' name. My teenager here said she has a question to ask me. So I would love to add to what mommy has said. First, I want to talk about comparison. Comparison? A lot of parents compare their children to other of their friends' children or to their siblings. For example, your child didn't pass so well in jump, and you and you are like, ah. Your, I get you. Your, I, I get you. She was trying some parents compare. They would say, already, yeah, the son of Lagbaja is called this one, this one, as if their own child has not tried. Abby, am I right? Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. 
So, you know, I said it's a family meeting. It's a family meeting. Every child is special and unique. I want to tell you, every child cannot be a doctor. We are not all cut out to be a lawyer. If everybody is a doctor, who will be the teacher to teach them? Me, I am proud to be a teacher. My parents wanted me to be a nurse or a doctor, better still. But I ended up being a teacher. At least I am not an outcast in the society. See, God has a plan and a purpose for each child. Encourage them when they are not doing well, even when you are not happy. I am a mother too, and I know what I am talking about. When you have them and one is not doing well, or when you think they are not performing up to expectation, it is very painful. But do you know it is painful to them too? Do you know that that child that is not doing well, if it's not deliberate, some you will see that they put in their efforts. But, you know, the thing is not coming the way we expected. Let's be compassionate towards them. Let's call them. Let's talk to them. How was the exam? Ah, and I was expecting so, 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 and so. But oh, it's all right. It's all right. You need to work harder, and God will help you. Look at, what do you think, how do you think I can be of help? What can I do to help you? Do I buy you more textbook? Do I do this? And at any time you see them reading, join them, even if for 30 minutes, even if for 15 minutes. Ah, okomi, onkawe, bele, olor anre, olor wo, jemi no, bejo kokin be, she show rudie, bele, boya woka, she wa mo, me she mbe, bo mi wa, that child will not want to disappoint you again. So don't let, don't, don't, don't think that, oh, komoweni, kokaweni, some are reading, but intelligence, IQ, oyat or sirawa, some, tombati ko, tombati ko, I have a younger brother, kokikawe. So, umbato wale fumetin, ah, mama mini wanti she, ele isi o le joko yi, ko le joko, when he was in government college, ko ni joko in class. O pe kato mo kwe, ko ri ron mo. So when mommy, the teacher sent for her, the mommy said, oh, go kick her notes, go kick her back, go kick her away. On a good day, oh, yeah, keep your hands, go look at it. He was, that room, he was going to be a be no joju mo, because we were, then we were living at Oremeji. I mean, Oremeji Agugu, and he was schooling at government college. And they would have to take her every day. What to log be lost on. Then, you know, when they got home and mommy called me, it was the sixth person. So mommy now called me and said, she will run more. She will run more. She will run more. Eh? Teacher, you pay me. Eh? Mwani, ade wale mbo. Eh? Mwani, ade mi ori ron. Mwani, ori ron. Kilo shoju eh? Mwani, mi kiri nko tomba koso jubod. Mwani, so I tell my parents, my friends to tell me what they are taught. Anything, tomba sofu nye. Only my fish exam. Oh, they my pass. So, you are money, she are more pay. Oh, yeah, to see, or more meat on back call. One more call, 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 koto ye. In fact, in me, or to dig battle, re battle call. Koto understand. So, to read back, she teacher. Go jack a more year, or more abon shen kawe. So, I want to encourage our parents, please accept us. Bearing cotton shelly. Boya baton kanye boya ko ye. You can be of assistance too. Eba mi wa in so modulo. Pe a be shaking bati cha for any. A be a be wa maka by suggest a lot of things and the children will know that you have trust in them. And don't let us impose. A lot of us we think these children are not doing well because we are imposing one course or the other on them. You want them to just be like Lagbaja. You want them to just be like Tama, uh, Tamadu. You are forgotten that God has a plan for their lives. God has a plan for their lives. 
and the purpose of God will stand sure in the life of our children in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So I think we're wrapping up now. Um, I just want to add something that we've not talked about. Um, in the book of 2 Corinthians 5.19, the Bible says, To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. I want us to know that the real build, um, the real build bridger is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's something that we have not um, mentioned specifically. Um, and the method by which Christ speaks to us these days is through the person of the Holy Spirit. That sometimes, that no matter how wise, how experienced a parent is, you'll be at crossroads and you'll be stuck. You don't know what to do concerning a particular decision, uh, you know, when it comes to your children. And then when you know that you're just a caretaker, that God is the real parent, and you're asking for instructions, the Holy Spirit can never be stuck. The Holy Spirit will always know the way out. With God, the solution is older than the problem. You know, so when you speak, when the Holy Spirit helps you out, you discover that parenting will become more easier. So I'm calling on the parents now to work on their relationship with God personally and take it deeper. I pray that all of the parents here and Ije Biluri and Mawaluruko Jesu. Praise you, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The question I'll be, ans I'll be answered is about giving space to our children. But I said, but, but I want to ask particularly. I was in the church sometimes, pastor in the church. And the, one of the ministers came to me and told me that somebody in the youth, we got him a, a holiday, an holiday job somewhere. And then another person came to report to that minister that he saw that boy smoking. I said, okay. So when I said for him, I said, come and see me in the house. And he came, and I took him out. He said he smokes eggs. I say, how come? Does that daddy know about it? He said, daddy doesn't know about it. Then how come? Oh, I saw me to want to learn like boy for me. Money, what of beer? I say, how come? I must not look it. And I told you, I bet you and to buy my body and my dad. Only but I'm not gone mad. So begin to talk, begin to talk. So he now said, all those who have been telling him about it, he said they are just they are harassing him, forcing him that this and that. He said, but I'm asked, he now told me he's going to he will leave it. But why the question I love that they ask, that when would the when would the parents call me uh, to that assessment? Believe me, my, even though this boy left it, but the one he has done, what the have he has committed in the school, caught him, caught him an expulsion from the school. She was expelled, prosecuted in the school. She couldn't continue. Praise the Lord, sir. You will see that by the time you called him, he told you that all that have all the people that have called him. They were harassing him at one time or the other. I will, just like my uh, youth said, the most important thing and person in this issue is the Holy Spirit. When you, one of the things that is most difficult to live is smoking. Because it's a spirit and it's an health issue. It's an health issue because when they told you that somebody that smoked is liable to die young, and that person still continues to take that thing, definitely something is wrong with the brain. So at a time like that, you should know that he needs help. That child needs help. He can no longer help himself because he can, he can no longer think straight again. He may think he's doing the right thing, but truly, he's not doing the right thing. Because as they grow, mostly the teenager, they pick this thing from school. When they fall into wrong peer groups, and that is why what uh, you, you, um, my youth said it's very very relevant show them Jesus 
sing it to their hairs. Though when they get to a certain age, they tell you that you are disturbing them. There was a day one of my son faced me and said, ah, ah, mommy Kilode, you and your husband is pastor. I am not a pastor. Leave me alone. So it, it's not that uh, it's because they are pastors. They are not experiencing it. No, we are experiencing the same thing. He said, leave me alone. I am not a pastor. I said I am not going to church today. You and your wife are pastors. They are waiting for you. And we, do, we left because we don't want to be late. And we came back. We slept and when he woke up, I said, I want to go for a walk that I want him to follow me. And we walked and we talked on the way. The most important thing is when that kind of a thing is happening and a particular child is smoking, cigarettes, uh, cannabis, and so on are the most difficult things to, to take from them. But one of the things you can do is after praying, after committing their heart to the Holy Spirit, take them to see they have all that th these things can cause. A landlady of my once took his son to police station. He stole her money and he did not tell anybody in the house. She just went and brought in a police and said, arrest him, he stole my money. And she did not tell us. The boy was there for about three days. Daddy just asked one day, I did that me, Uri. And he said, he's in police station. Daddy said, doing what? He said, oh, Jale, with the tiny color power, I'm a baby, show you how we're ready. Timo, one lay, and you did not tell me because the father happens to be my husband's best friend. So we were living in their house. We were living together. We were living, he's, they are living in the one flat. We were living in the other one. We are not paying. So he said, ah, and you left me in the house and you took the boy to police station. He said, yes, I want him to know what happens to harm robbers. So when they steal, what they do for them? He only, she only begged that they should not put the boy amidst the ham robber, that they should put him in a separate cell, and they should beat him in the morning, beat him in the evening for that three days. In fact, they just finished beating him. By the time we got there, they saw day. And the boy was helpless. The mother tried her best. When the boy grew up, when he grew up, he happened to work in a bank. With all the mother did, you will not expect that child to fall into that type of trap again. But he was one of those guys that took money from Central Bank, money that they said they should go and destroy. He was one of them. He built houses. He made money but he cannot walk freely even in the street of Nigeria now. The mother tried. So, as parents, we will do all we could, but we cannot change them. It is God alone that can change them. See, I used to be worried. A man gave me a ride, you know, and I told him I've been looking for him. He said, ah, mommy, I said, I want you to tell me about yourself. And he said, for 17 years, he was hooked to drug. For 17 years. He said he studied in Canada. For 17 years, he was hooked to drugs. And he said, mommy, I was, my parents, my mother cried for 13 years. He said, any time she phoned her like this, the mother would be crying. Oh, the man by me, John Tory alone. He said the mother believed that, oh, it is some people that are manipulating her life. Maybe it was one juju woman, one maybe it's a witch or whatever. He said it was when she, he gave her life that he now realized that he's the one doing himself and nobody is doing him because he fell into a wrong hand. Parents, we are going to try our best. Tabasare kokosi it is only God. It is the only spirit. And let this be our prayer. Lord, let them have an encounter with you.
When they have an encounter with their maker, that settles it. They will realize themselves. Kolojo koti ni school kusokwe kumo koto nche. To ba demonule to rokwe kujade irony. What they do? Shebi bati go baru lo masokwe omugbo. What of I want to tablets? Tio tia nero. So a lot of things are wrong. And you know, by anxiety, by getting worried, a commander commits less in your year. A wani or let me cancel any anti me any in cocoon board or she you and so it big but I'm my bar make it on more board of our cyber grant. Come back be flower daddy. Come on, mommy. Ha ha, wish you a life. So it be a more seed then so see no idea one year. Tori Adura told me that you will not go unanswered. Because all those words you are telling them morning and afternoon will not go into the dish. God will make them germinate. So don't get worried. Don't disturb yourself. Be praying. Anything you can do to help, do, but you can't change them. It is the Holy Spirit that can only speak to them. To read me in Koti once, so any other thing Koti won't read once or four. We were fasting one day, and we discovered a boy was smoking cannabis. Who then by way? She ain't a wonder. Eh, she ha. But what be the money? Kilo it too waste time. Kilo it too kukumba wag by way. But see, one mugbo only mommy is part of it. Only God created cannabis for our use. It is only when you abuse it that only it has become a tablet. When I have a day, I use it so that it will not worry me. What do they get from it? Feeling. So, you can't stop it. I am telling you from the experience, it is God. It is their maker. It is the Holy Spirit that will do the work. So before I left, I want us to bow down our heads again. And let's talk to him that holds the children. That he will perfect that that concerns them that our children will have an encounter with the Lord, that he will give us the grace to lead them by examples, that the plan and purpose of God will stand sure in the life of our children, that he shall be well with these children. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for the privilege of learning something greater this morning. We commit your daughter unto your able hand. Lord God Almighty, continue to uphold her in the name of Jesus. This thing, O oh Lord, she told her this morning, we believe is by the power of the Holy Spirit. My Father, my God, we that have been the partaker of it this morning, Lord, grant us the grace to do accordingly in the mighty name of Jesus.